Hello and welcome to the 2021 RHS Hampton Court Palace Garden Festival. It's been way too long, but after two years, we're finally all back together again. And it's time to celebrate at one of the largest gardening events in the world. Now, time to return to the Global Impact Gardens and a first look at the work of a designer that is completely new to the gardening world. Not only is he creating his very first show garden, he's also aiming to raise awareness of an environmental issue that's really close to his heart. I'm Baz Granger and I am a garden designer. I've been in the fashion industry for 25 years. I decided to leave the fashion industry behind and become a garden designer. I'd had two soft starts at trying to do it and then always ended up getting another job in fashion. And then this time around, I decided that I wasn't actually even going to look. I was just going to jump straight in. And the RHS um, and Hampton Court really, really gave me that excuse. Now that is a really good colour. The drivers in fashion when we first started are all about trying to do something new. Everyone brings out a new product and there's a big deal about it every week, you know. Um, and so this, it, it just intensifies the pressure, intensifies the, um, the, the drain on, on natural resources, the drain on the planet, because that's what the fashion industry is about. Whereas I suppose with garden design, we, you know, you're actually you're designing a natural environment and actually you're helping the natural environment. Ultimately, it's, the, it's that being able to design spaces that people want to be in. The damage that the fashion industry is doing to the planet is, is on a scale that is uh, it's just unbelievable. Experiencing things firsthand where you see effluent being pumped into the river or pollution being blown into the atmosphere, it really spurred me on to do something about it. Well, the concept of the garden was really to raise awareness of the footprint that the fashion industry is leaving on the planet um, and some of the steps that we can take to help um, reduce that impact. The layout of the garden uh, was actually inspired by my visits to Asia, seeing how these traditional sort of dying areas function. So there's a sunken area which has uh, a water feature in it, which has two large barrels, but the combined water in there is approximately the same amount as needed to produce one or a single pair of jeans. In the sunken area, there's a, a gravel surface on it, but the gravel is actually made up of buttons. Around the sort of boundary of the garden, we have these uh, wooden structures. They're made of Siberian larch, which is a very sustainably sourced timber. And woven in between that is we have um, fabric, which is actually um, denim. I felt very strongly about using natural dye on the fabric. And so the um, designer I used to work with, Mawson Sarjid, who is a denim expert, um, was one of the first people I thought of when I was first putting the garden together. And we're off to see him this afternoon to hopefully decide on a colour to use denim in the garden as a fabric. And is that what I think it is? That is, that, that's, that, that's an indigo plant. So the actual dye, well, natural indigo comes from a plant, so it would have come from the leaves. So what they would do is in places like India, Pakistan, they would actually harvest that actual plant and they would condense all the, all the leaves, actually dry them out for months and then grind it down to a powder and make a, make a, right. paste, make, yeah. make a paste as well, so yeah. So then it goes in here. Yeah, so what you do is to make an indigo dye that you add a uh, lime and fructose, which is like sugar. And yeah, we can we can do some do some indigo dyeing. Great. Okay. And it's actually green. It's, it's um, yeah, the dye is actually green. It's not blue. So when it's in there, now you can massage it. Okay. And oxygenate the fabric. Yeah, look at that. That's amazing. It really is amazing. So I guess you can do this loads of times to get it really, really dark. Yeah, and what's interesting is, I've got a little pre-chart here. This is like second dip, third dip, and then second and seven dips. And that here is like probably like 28 or 30 dips. Wow. So obviously it depends how strong the vat is. Yeah. So this is actually some fabric that's pre-woven, pre but in the denim world, we will do the fibres individually. So right. the warp fibres are indigo and the weft fibres are left white or, right. or, or like ecru. This so is what gives you the white back. That's right. Yeah, that's, right. Yeah, that's great. That's a lovely colour. Yeah, these are really good shades. I reckon we're pretty close, probably with something like that. Nice. 
by the time we by the time that sort of dries down, I think we're going to be be really good good to go. It's incredible. It's exciting. It's challenging. It's terrifying. But it's what I've wanted to do for a very long time. Is. This may be a small garden, but it's got all the features that you want. Shade, seats, water feature, and of course, plants. But talking of this shade, I do really love it. I love this 3D element because it gives so much more volume into the garden. This water feature, I know it's depicting the amount of water that's used in the dye production of denim. Actually, on its own, I love its tranquility and it's been executed really well. The final detail that I really love is the bus and gravel. It's so unique and so different, and quite crunchy underfoot. <laughs> Baz, it's so nice to be another fashion person who's cross-tracks into garden design. Yes, no, absolutely. It's been a long time coming, uh, 20 years of uh, appreciating horticulture from the outside, and, and here we are. You're here yes. and you've delivered a smashing garden. Oh, thank you. So tell me a bit more about the plant choices that you've got here. Well, the plant brief was very strict. So it was plants that could be made into natural dyes. And so it kind of made things quite tight and quite easy, actually, to choose those plants. But we've ended up with some really lovely colours that complement the steel, in particular the bronze fennel. We've got things like Achillea, which makes great dye. The herbs in particular are really good. Things like the red basil, which gives a really strong red dye. You know what's going to happen now, don't you? There's going to be a big expectation for us to come up with a fashion range for garden designers. <laughs>